Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Esquire Coaching Radio, where we help attorneys achieve unparalleled personal and professional success. And now here's your host, Anne Janet Thomas. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Esquire Coaching Radio. It's such a pleasure to be with you with, with you tonight. As you know, Esquire Coaching is a coaching and consulting firm that is dedicated to helping attorneys achieve extraordinary whole life success. And to that end, we discuss the full range of topics from building your business to getting a job to work-life balance and everything in between. Today, we have a very special guest who is going to talk to us about a critical topic for so many attorneys. Specifically, we're going to hear about how to maintain healthy relationships. You know, the high stress and ongoing demands of practicing law can take a toll on relationships. Lawyers who are single complain about the difficulty of finding a mate when so much of their time and energy is devoted to work. Meanwhile, lawyers who are in intimate relationships are constantly struggling to ensure that they are present and available for their spouses and partners. So to help enlighten us on this topic, we have... And I love this woman. We have a relationship expert and love style coach, Lisa Velasquez. Lisa is a highly sought-after coach, speaker, and writer that's been featured in Latina Magazine, Identity Magazine, Gotham Radio, Capucho Radio, among others. And they are always seeking her out for her inside scoop on modern dating and healthy romantic relationships. Lisa attended Teachers College, Columbia University for a Master's in Clinical Psychology, and is a certified sex therapist, sexuality educator, and facilitator for preventing an adolescent pregnancy. As a social entrepreneur with a global vision, her latest campaign is One Million Leaders for Love, Love by Example. Her message embodies the belief that when you choose to stand for your love vision, you can change the world. With her straight talk about love and compassion for each person's journey, Lisa teaches you to create what she calls love standards, to get real, get clear, and get ready for the love life you desire. She is the CEO of Wonder Women and creator of Lisa Talks Love. She's also a part of the SR coaching team. It's my great honor and pleasure to, to introduce this extraordinary woman who works with a lot of lawyers. So welcome, welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Anne, for that amazing introduction. Wow. <laughs> Oh, really? Well, you're amazing. So this well, is so you just have an amazing introduction. <laughs> yeah, I did. That was a little unexpected there. I just thought we were going to go short, but that was wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that, and it makes me so excited and grateful to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. So let's dive in because this is such an important topic, and it's a juicy one, and I want to make sure we we get a lot out of it. So tell us a little bit about what is love style coaching. Well, love cycle, love cycle coaching is a phrase I invented because my expertise is in sex, dating, and relationships, and they all embody love. So my thing is, you know, helping people to revamp their sex, dating, and relationship style, their approach to love. So really more focusing on not just one particular area, meeting the person where they are. If there's a sexual issue, whether it's something medical or something where there is um, – you know, lack of communication to support them in getting to their um, sexual goals and, you know, helping them create um, a vibrant sex life that they're seeking. If it's something dating, maybe they want to be a better dater, maybe they want to communicate better, uh, to connect with someone to, to date casually or to, you know, date to connect with a relationship, I'll support the person there. Now, relationships, maybe you're in a relationship already, whether you're married or just in a committed romantic relationship where you're not married, um, I help you either reboot that relationship, have a better communication, um, really build the connection further. And whatever it is you're looking to have, you know, a healthy, vibrant, powerful relationship. So I basically meet people where they are. So all of, overall, it's love style. It's really helping you with your approach to love. Mm, I love that. It's it's very comprehensive. And I think it's such an important topic because 
part of what we emphasize here is whole life success. And relationships can be an important part of whole life success for many people. So I know that you coach a lot of attorneys. And so what would you say is the most common love issue that you see that comes up for lawyers that keep them stuck? Hmm. So as far as single attorneys, um, a lot of the time, depending with male or female, so I'm going to go with the female side, is really um, prioritizing relationships. Um, a lot of female attorneys, you know, these amazing, successful, you know, brilliant women, and some of them are not prioritizing that part of their lives. Um, and you, regardless of what your career is, and I do understand the amount of hours that attorneys need to put into work, especially when they're on the road to partner, especially when they are a partner, okay? Um, so taking into account how that can actually work for you, um, and a lot of these women want to meet very intelligent, successful, strong men. So the, what I see coming up a lot of the time is that they're meeting a man that is just like them. And that's where they're having the conflict because for a lot of single, powerful women, um, you can still continue to be powerful but understand that men want their, they want their complement, not their competition. So Ooh, recognizing, more about that. Okay. So recognizing there is an energy, uh, there's an energy that a powerful, fe brilliant female attorney is going to bring to the table, and sometimes that energy can be too masculine, and um, and a man doesn't want to be with another man, so he doesn't want the woman he's with to have a masculine energy. Now remember, I said masculine energy. I didn't say he didn't want the person to be powerful. There is a difference. You can bring feminine energy and still bring power. Um, women have something that I love talking about, having an intuition, having an essence to understand what you're bringing into the room. You can bring an energy that's so relaxed into the room that can shift the power of the room. And you can still be brilliant and you can still speak your mind. So when you're looking into meeting men, you don't want to put your professional hat on. You want to put your personal hat on. So really bringing a different energy. And women get to understand that bringing your feminine energy and relaxing more, and that's really how you tap into it. For an alpha woman or a high-powered woman, you get to relax more. Because what I've seen across the board with female attorneys is this fast energy that can be heavy at times. Now, at the same time, she can still be brilliant and powerful, but it, it gets to be a more relaxed energy, not a passive energy, a relaxed energy, a grounded energy. So when she walks into the room and meets her colleagues and is still this brilliant woman, she can radiate an essence that can relax the men that she's around. Without pampering anyone, well, this energy will actually get the men to step up to provide and connect with her. Wow, this is a this is something that I've not really heard anybody talk about before, about the feminine energy being a powerful energy. So how how do you advise people to be able to be relaxed when we are so used to being in a very high strung legal environment? Well, I will say this. Um, you're not necessarily looking for love when in the middle of an acquisition. <laughs> so when you're actually doing work, um, it's, a, it's very different. So I say when you're at work, you're at work. But the one thing that women attorneys can learn from work is listening skills. Women, you know, we're compassionate, you know, we have great hearts. But when we're in our high power positions, we tend to just go, go, go. Now, granted, when you're working with, you know, your male counterparts, when you're speaking with um, someone that you manage or someone that um, may oversee what you do as well, either way, you, you know, men and women are in different positions, um, listen to learn. You know, you want to listen to, like, understand the person. You, you want to listen to see where they are versus waiting for your turn to jump in. Because a lot of the time in business, everyone wants to speak up to be heard. But a lot of the time, if you listen to your male counterparts, not obey, I must emphasize, we're not listening to obey people. We're listening to understand and learn about them. So you can actually meet them halfway in what's going on while you're working with them. But even, you know, a lot of the time we're so used to talking about our, 
we're so used to talking about our achievements. I would tell a lot of successful women, even women who are not attorneys, this will benefit them as well, don't lead with your resume. Um, you already know what you've accomplished. He will find out how accomplished you are, but you're not dating based on resumes. You obviously, you know, a lot of women in this field, attorneys, they definitely want successful men. However, that can look many different ways. When you are picking a partner, you want to be with someone that you're collaborating with at a heart center. You want a strong man that's also compassionate. You want a man that's going to understand your lifestyle and your schedule. You're looking for someone to be your complement, someone you want to share your home and your life with. So really thinking about um, not burning out your energy, and that's why I say tap into the feminine energy where if there's go, 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 before you enter a room, before you start your day, a lot of women, you know, are going to the gym and working out and taking care of themselves to be healthy in the high power position. However, the other part of that is do the, the exercises that will balance your energy throughout the day You'd be amazing the wonderful things you attract when you've grounded your energy for the day. So you're in that high-powered place, but when you're grounded, you can actually see everyone else running around while you're calm still doing your work. And not to say things are not going to come on your desk that are not going to be priority and they're not going to be urgent. However, you can be urgent without being, you know, I want to say like splattered all over the place with your energy and scattered and erratic. It's really coming from a place of, well, how can we get this done, you know, in excellence? How can we be successful at this? What needs to be taken care of? Who do we need to speak to? And when you come with that grounded energy, there's so much power in that without needing to be aggressive. And it definitely will be something beneficial when you're in the boardroom as well. That is really good feedback. That's great advice. Now, I want to switch gears a little bit and what it, what do you see is happening with our male attorneys? What keeps them stuck in either not attracting or being able to maintain a healthy relationship? I want to say maintain. I've not met many male attorneys that can't find women to date. <laughs> um, you know, us women who want to be with successful men, we're open to dating you know, attorneys and all that. So I would definitely say um, – you know, those men are extremely ambitious, and, and they, you know, have the right to be as well as women. Um, definitely looking at picking a partner that's going to understand your schedule. And this goes for both sexes, but I would say that what I hear a lot of is dating this great woman, you know, um, whatever profession she's in. You know, that she's a teacher or, you know, she's a nurse or a social worker or she's an artist, whatever the case may be. They pick someone where there's a complete, complete opposite because they're looking for someone that can – bring a calmness to their lives. So the men are well aware that they want that in their lives. Okay, so, but what happens is the person doesn't understand their work lifestyle. So there's this assumption that they're just going to get it without discussing it with them. So it's really about discussing the work lifestyle. Because I'm hearing a lot of breakups. She doesn't understand my work schedule. She doesn't understand I have all these meetings to go to. She doesn't understand I'm politically affiliated with this person. I need to get this done. Did you discuss your relationship lifestyle, what you want that to look like? You know, you need to find someone that's really going to understand what it is your work lifestyle is like, and is that going to contribute to the healthy relationship that you want? And you also get to realize you get to prioritize your relationship. Um, you get to prioritize your relationship and really look at the vision you want to have for that relationship. And the other piece is sometimes the men are confused with the type of woman they want to be, there are instances where they'll want a powerful woman in a powerful position, and they won't understand her schedule. So in a position like this, the gentlemen start to get to really have an opportunity to understand and be authentic and honest about the kind of partner they want and the kind of partner they need. And is if the way they're working as an attorney at this moment in time, because that gets to change, you don't need to be a first-year associate forever, right? You, you schedule gets to change and what you do gets to change. Am I in the right type of law that's going to be contributing to the kind of healthy relationship that I crave? Because if it's consistent across the board and you're meeting amazing women, but it's consistently the schedule you choose to have, you need to look at where you get to shift that. Mm. This is great advice. And I think, you know, so what I'm really hearing you say, just to recap, I'm hearing you talk about the importance of communicating your work style your, you know, and its impact on your life. I'm hearing you talking about making sure that that 
people take the time to balance their energies. And I also wanted to sort of make it, I guess, clear that some of these are also translatable to the LGBT community and relationships in gay and lesbian relationships as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, good. So we, yeah, just reiterating partner, I'm just literally speaking about specific clients that I had, but it's across the board. And, you know, there's, you know, masculine, feminine energy, feminine energy in all relationships, whether it's a woman in a relationship with a woman and a man in a relationship with a man, it is the same across the board. Um, people have certain priorities when they're, um, when they're in certain professions, such as law. And when you prioritize such a high-powered, you know, career, you get to look at how that's going to affect your partner. Um, like, say, an attorney and a chef. A chef has a pretty vigorous schedule as well, um, yeah. especially if they're, you know, a very successful executive chef. So really looking at, like, some people are like, you know, my partner's busy and I'm busy and I understand. We both understand. But well, they prioritize quality time with one another. <laughs> so looking at, right, so looking at your both, these two gentlemen are completely accepting of both their career scenarios. Are they connecting for love? When are they connecting for love? And it is equality for them. Because what happens, unfortunately, that I've seen happen um, is that there gets to be, you know, where there's issues in the relationship of fidelity. Um, and some people are so disconnected emotionally, they'll put up with it. And that's not what they will say that they want. It's not what they say they'll want. They'll say, I want a monogamous relationship, but, you know, this is what happens when you're disconnected. And like, well, what do you do to get to be connected to your partner? Um, and I've had this scenario come up with my gay clients that are not lawyers, but they are in high-powered positions. Um, and it's really when one um, partner's traveling a lot, what seems to come up? Um, because that's what's going on in their job. They're in sales, and they need to consistently be traveling to make sales, to make revenue, to put food on the table. But there gets to be a conversation of where where do we, why is there a line where we're going to be able to cross over our relationship ethics? So oh, yeah, on this, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think this is, this, this is, this is vital. And now I, this is actually a nice segue into what advice or tips do you have for people who are in either marriages or committed partnerships to help keep a relationship sizzling and thriving? Love that question. I just really, you know, want to stress more than anything, connection. Connection. It's so simple. And, you know, even having like a short meeting in the morning, um, you know, depending on what time of day it is, when you're going to check in to have a 10, 15-minute phone call. And I say that at the beginning, like making sure there's a time of the day where you know you're connecting with your partner. And the way you do your quality time, keep it back to the basis of when you got together. A lot of the time, you know how we reminisce about the honeymoon phase of the relationship in the beginning? Well, you get to, like, reinstate that part of your relationship consistently. You know, sometimes you're out in the noisy world of whatever field you're in, right? When you're an attorney, you don't want to think about the board meetings and, you know, the networking events and, like, the huge political events or whatever they're connected to, right, for the firm. And you really want to find a place where it's simple with your partner, you know. Um, and the funny thing, I always suggest things to make relationships stay, you know, vibrant and fiery, you know, there to be a sizzle, like you get certain points. The simplest thing that people do when they're in casual relationships, bring that to your serious relationship, your committed relationship. You can text each other sexy notes. <laughs> yeah. Because that little thing will have you like, oh, okay, you can come to your partner and, you know, give them a sexy embrace or a squeeze and walk away and continue with the event. You create that desire with little steps from there to keep you together. Because a lot of the time, it takes that little thing to be disconnected. But that one little thing will reconnect you. That little oh, moment. This is and fabulous. you're like, wait a second. You're... <laughs> but, because no, you're just not really. Because, you know, one of the biggest complaints that I hear across the board among attorneys is, okay, you know, we are so busy. There's so much going on. There's no time. But it takes no time at all to, you know, like you said, have a send a text, 
what is that, less than a minute? <laughs> or mm -hmm. give a sexy embrace as you walk by. That does not take much time at all. It just takes a bit of awareness and consciousness. So these these are great so far. I wanna um I wanna just remind our listeners that if you have a question for Lisa, simply press one at any time. Just call our our number three four seven eight three eight eight seven one nine. That's three four seven eight three eight eight seven one nine. And then press one so you can get in queue to to uh, ask Lisa a question. But let me return back to you now, Lisa. You just gave some really great tips on on really being able to be quick about about staying in, in, in a place of connection. Tell me a little bit about this idea of a love vision and love standards that, that you so frequently talk about. Well, a love vision is something I work on my clients with just to get the picture of what it is they want to create for themselves and really understanding what it feels like to be in the relationship and also what you actually see the relationship is. Definitely on a one-on-one -on -one I go more in depth, but simply like what kind of relationship do you want to be in? You know, you can say I want to be in an open, vulnerable, trusting, connected, sexy, passionate, committed, romantic relationship, right? You can say that. Great. That's the base of your vision. Now, what do you see you doing with your partner? And you could really connect on, like, you know, my partner is someone that we spend quality time together doing X, Y, and Z, whatever that looks like, traveling to Vermont or, you know, going to San Francisco or to the vineyards, whatever that looks like for you, um, you know, you know, creating a family or just, like, someone that I can share my career with and appreciates me. And even bringing into that last piece that I mentioned, like someone that will go with you to these important events where you want to have your your spouse or your partner support, and they go with you, and that's that cute piece where you can like sexy embrace for two seconds. And then just thinking about what are the basics. I always go to the five non-negotiables when I do coaching. What are five things you cannot compromise on? You know, uh, this person needs to be um, – healthy. They need to have an active, healthy lifestyle. I can't compromise. That's something I really need my partner to have because I want to, you know, someday have children and I want us to both create a healthy lifestyle for the kids and I want to be active with my partner. And then you want to go into the pieces. You can also say they need to be family oriented. They need to be spiritual. Like whatever the five bases, like basis, the basics, sorry, the basic things are that you know that you need that you're not going to compromise on. Um, they need to come to the table with. And then the ten things or ten ways you want to be treated, which is also ten needs. And you really get to be honest and authentic about what it is you really need from your partner. A lot of people are like, oh, no, that's too much. No, if you're not going to put it out there, you're not going to get it. And the other part of it is what's going to show up is what you don't want, and then you're going to be compromising on that and then wishing your partner had X, Y, and Z. And then a lot of people go outside of the relationship to get those needs that had they been clear about their love standards and their vision, that actually would have showed up what they wanted versus stepping outside of the relationship to create it. Oh, that's so true. And I love what you're saying. You know, you do get to ask for 100% of what you want 100% of the time. I remember hearing that at, at a workshop that I had attended, and I think that that doesn't mean you always get that as an end result, but you still have permission to request it. Yes, and the other piece to understand is that you get to show up in a way that's going to create this in your life. And you'll see it starting to show up with your friends, with your family, with your professional relationships. It's really about you showing up that way. And honestly, it's, it's not just a list of, like, I want this, I want that. It's really about how in the relationship you want to be treated. Like, you know, I really want someone that's open and adventurous. Um, I want someone that's nurturing. Um, you know, you're honest about what you need. You want someone that has patience or that's accepting. And those are simple things. You know, and I think that we forget that sometimes. So I always say you can get what it is that you actually need when you put it out there authentically that you need it. Um, and I stress this more to my female clients because my male clients get it pretty quickly. They get it very quickly. Um, no matter if they're gay or straight, my male clients are very clear on what they need. And honestly, like understanding that communicating that is going to bring that in, I find it more with female clients that they're more focused on, like, being worried that it's a demand and understanding that 
the same way you created this successful, amazing career, you get to create a successful, amazing love life that you deserve. Absolutely. So, this is this is actually a really good segue to something that you and I talked about before this this interview started, which is about self love and the role that self love and self compassion play. So, talk to us a little bit about that from your perspective. Well, I always say that self love is not a phase; it is a daily practice. It is something we get to do for ourselves daily. And a lot of people are like, well, I love myself. I do whatever I want. Well, that's not really self-love. <laughs> that's the power of choice, which is amazing. Um, but really, <laughs> really looking at what self-love is, is really about making choices that are alignment with your well-being, with your emotional well-being, with your physical well-being, you know, just really looking at that. And sometimes those choices are not necessarily what we desire at that moment on a superficial level, but they are the choices that we get to make to take care of ourselves. So really having compassion for yourself. Um, and I say when people don't understand self-love, I say remove the word self and focus on the word love. And how do you love your partner, your friends, your family, your children? You know, you would be there for them to prove your love. You would support them. You would encourage them. You would nurture them. Now add self to that and focus on you. Bring it back to you. And that is how you love yourself. You are gentle with yourself. You're compassionate. And you, you take it easy on yourself when, you're, when you've been through things that, you know, maybe you're not so proud of yourself or you're going through some hurt. Whatever that is, don't beat yourself up. So really practice self-compassion, develop your self-worth and your self-value, and really trust that you deserve those things because treat, people are going to treat you how you treat yourself, and those who do not treat you well, those are the people you don't want to surround yourself with. So really recognizing that sometimes it's – at times it can feel like a hard choice when you're not practicing it regularly, but self-love is something that's needed for a lifetime. It really is, and and honestly, to it, to tie it back to our our main topic, you cannot have a healthy relationship without first having a foundation in self love. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know, I'm so glad you said that. You can have a relationship. You will attract a healthy one because because some people are like, what you attract if you don't have self love. Exactly, and that's something to stress because some people are like. Well, this person doesn't love themselves and they're in a relationship. Well, that's the problem. They're attracting another person that doesn't love themselves either, and that's projecting what they don't feel for themselves onto their partner who is insecure. So you'll see that, that imbalance of power or an abuse of power. So it's really looking like what kind of relationship do you want to attract? Because you will attract one. You will. But you want to attract a healthy relationship, a healthy partnership. Absolutely. And especially, I mean, we have enough demands on us as attorneys. There's enough going on that, that really require our time and attention. You want to make sure that you're well supported by, by making sure that if you choose to be in a relationship, that it's a healthy one. So, you know, believe it or not, we are almost out of time. Lisa, can you please tell our audience how they can learn more about you, get in touch with you, and any upcoming projects or events that you might be having? Oh, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, once again, I'm Lisa Velasco. I'm a love talk coach, relationship expert. You can reach me at lisatalkslove.com. You can subscribe to my newsletter list, Love Wisdom Weekly, where you'll get free tips on uh, how to create the love that you want. And if you're interested in doing private coaching with me, you can reach me at lisa at lisatalkslove.com, and we can set up a complimentary 15 to 20-minute love discovery session. And we'll just go over where you currently are in your love life to see, you know, how I can support you in your goals. Whether or not you sign up for the coaching or not, it can definitely add value to your love life. So definitely connect with me there, and I hope to hear from you. I love it. I love it. Lisa, you have been such a great guest. It's been so wonderful to have all of your insights shared. You know, um, thank you so much for being here today. And for the rest of you listeners, please keep in touch with us. Hook, us, hook up with us on Facebook or Twitter. We're at Esquire Coaching, um, Facebook.com, and uh, at Esquire Coaching Twitter handle. So uh, stay in touch. Next week, we will be interviewing Emily Nyman, who is a partner at Ballard's Bar, and she's going to be talking about 
how to really work the pathways to partnership, a, a really good, important conversation. So one last final tip uh, from you, Lisa, before we go. Well, I would always say um, love by example. Mm -hmm. That is the way to attract what you want, set so the example in love. Love it. Thank you so much. You are awesome. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you, love by example. Bye. Bye.